Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? It's the Architect Beats Music Business Podcast. We are your hosts, Platinum Producers, Architect Beats. I am Juggernaut. I am Mike Drama D. And if it's your first time here, welcome to the podcast. Uh, we get we get together every week to basically discuss things in the music industry, music business, uh, give producers tips, give artists tips, singers and songwriters, you know, just give them some resources to help them navigate this crazy music business. So we here today. We want to get into this. There's a uh, there was something interesting that was going around um, this weekend on social media, and it was related to a producer situation with uh, Bobby Schmurter. Okay. Yeah. And it was centered around the situation where he was complaining about paying too much for the tracks <clears throat> excuse me so what i wanted to talk about today is i wanted to talk about um producer collaborations um are they good are they bad what's the what's the do's what's the don'ts um, right. cause I, I think a lot of the misunderstanding is that there may have been some production collaborations um and that may have created some confusion in terms of the price etc so okay let's kind of get into it let's kind of give the 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 producers um some some feedback as to what to look out for when they're doing production collaborations and what are the pros and cons of doing so well production collaboration um and i know we've, we've touched on this uh you know briefly before but producer collaborations are um, I think is is a great thing, um, you know, creatively, you know, creatively, um, you know, you know, just to be around uh, another producer that may, you know, create create differently can be uh, ins- insightful information, you know, um, could allow could allow just to learn different things, different techniques, you know, for example, you know, one producer may be very good on drums and another producer may be good, very good at creating uh, samples and melodies. And when you put them together, you know, it can, it can be really like, wow, we've created something, you know, much better than um, maybe one can, one would predict, um, would create on their own, you know, also, you know, just having in, and, you know, me and you do this all the time, just being, having those second ears to say yay or nay like okay switch this out let's put this in there and you know um just make the production uh, um more full so it has its benefits definitely on a creative uh aspect you know um it also has its, its, its uh benefit on a networking level you know if one producer uh you know is kind of limited to, to to these artists but the other producer has access to these artists. When they come together, create the music. Now they could actually send those records out to to both. Right, uh, it, it, it's gonna it's gonna increase your network and give you chances of landing a placement. It's gonna increase that. Yeah, it, exactly. So you got those those benefits. Um, uh, the downfalls um, is uh, you know if if you have any issues with splits. If they're not worked out up front, you know, one producer can be expecting uh, the rec to be split this way or that way as far as rights. Um, uh, advances, you know, maybe one producer's work um, used to getting maybe five grand and the other producer, you know, is, is willing to take whatever's when the opportunity comes, you know, um, you know, the, the producer um, who wants the five grand, you know, and can't get the five grand, may may say, nah, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not gonna um, move forward on this this deal with this opportunity that presented itself. While the other producer was just like, nah, I'm just trying to, if it's fifteen hundred, I'm good. Let's just rock, you know. And and so it's it could cause a lot of uh, issues if if these things aren't um um placed. Uh, right away. Um, additionally, and I think what happened with the Bobby Smurder situation also was just, hey, you got two producers, one one maybe like five grand, another maybe five grand, and they're like, okay, let's charge ten. <laughs> you know, and it's like, nah, 
you can't you can't charge ten. You got to charge the five, and after you get the five, you got to break it down. You know, with the, with the with your, with your with your partners. You know, so that could have been uh, uh, the situation, and you know, that's that's not going to fly. It, it's 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 so much to unpack in what you just said. So I want to I want to just jump back to the pros, yeah. right? Like you said, right. let's let's talk about the the pros, and there was like about two or three pros and the producer collaboration when we talked about one the collaboration making something new fresh different right because like you said i might be good on the drums and you and i do this stuff in tandem like you know you might program something and then you might say hey chop the loop this way verse first or we send it back and forth and we do all type of things to enhance what it is that we're doing um the other thing might be that i see happening a lot of times is that when I see those producer um, collaborations, it seems like things get made faster. Okay. Right. Right. I see like, you know, cause like, again, people are kind of staying in their element. This person can just play anything on the keys. This person can program real fast. And it seems to make the beats come out a lot quicker um, in terms of, you know, just mass producing. And I, and I think in this game, the, the, the speed in which you can produce music helps. Right. Um, the, so that's another thing. And like you also said now, was the network now we're talking about two set of producers two set of chances two sets of places that you can send the music out to um i guess when we talk about that in terms of sending out who who's who, when sending out i guess i guess it has to be established that whoever gets the placement takes the lead yeah and i yes, think that's, that makes sense. that needs to be kind of established in the beginning unless you know, you're, you're going under a very, very established producer who already has a very large network and most likely is going to be the one to secure the um, the deal. But in the case where we're collaborating and we're going to split everything, it has to be the we have to determine, like you said in the beginning, what is going to be the terms of this track that we're selling. Right. And if the track is going to say if we're selling it for five thousand, then we need to be clear that we're splitting it for five thousand and that multiplying it by five thousand right and then um it it creates this this other thing like we like we're trying to avoid that kind of confusion but at the same time it it's it's tough because if one if 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 the lead is split between whoever it's like what you might figure might feel is favorable terms i may not feel as favorable terms and I don't think people are having. I don't think producers are having those conversations in the beginning. Wow, I just yeah. don't. I mean, like, I don't think they're having those conversations. Like, I think people are just they're collaborating, and then they would say, "Okay, we're worried about it on the back end." And typically, that's what happens because we're not trying to kill the vibe, talking about something that hasn't occurred. Well, I think I think you know when you when you um, collab with a producer, man, like. I think just vibing with the artists, you know, musically is 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 one set. But you got to vibe in as far as your goals, you know, sure. what you what you're trying to do. Like like you got to connect in a way that like, okay, the goal of this is to is to is to to get this placement, and we have an understanding that okay, we may have to take some little L's here and there. There has to be some sort of agreement. And you have to be able to vibe, like, because it's going to, in some cases, it is difficult to, to have these conversations in some cases. That's why it's like, it's very important to be able to vibe with whoever you're going to do business with. You know, whoever you're going to do business with, you you, you want to make sure you guys are on the same page, you know, and, and, and creatively, that's one thing, but on the business, it's, a, it's another thing. You can vibe creatively with a, with a, with a producer or artist, and y'all make great music, but on the business end, y'all suck. Y'all can't get things going. Y'all, y'all, y'all falling apart. And you know we've had this experience with people too. Like we make great records with uh, uh, artists, but when they come down to the business or the management or whatever case, it should just start falling apart. You know, and, um, and that's and that's and that's really like you said, it's because you're not on the same page, right? You're not on the same page. Or, or sometimes people have an inflated or delusional sense of what they're worth. Exactly. You know, and and that's that's a, that's another problem again is like you know you know you can't tell a person what they're worth 
right? Because, you know, everybody's going to say, hey, you're supposed to know your worth. And, you know, what is that? Like, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, when we're dealing with budgeted situations or non-budgeted situations, like you said, everybody has to have some sort of level of flexibility. And then at the same time, also be able to kind of be on the same page in terms of the goals. Like, what's the goal? Is the goal is to get some placements, get some traction going, get our resume bigger, and then now start start setting new new uh, levels in terms of what we're gonna sell out our music for. It's 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 a it's unfortunate when I see that. Um, that's like you said, like it's the biggest issue is like not being on the same page, and and then that then trying to, you know, I want this and you want that. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, we've been in this business for for a long time, and um, we've we've been through like tons of negotiations, and you know, in 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 you know many cases, you know, you're not going to get a hundred percent of every everything you want. You know, there's some pieces that you may want to be you're going to take a L in just to get this other thing. That's just the the spirit of the business, you know. Um, if you're lucky, you may be able to get everything, you know, if, if, right. if, 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 if you got to smash. And, and, yeah. And, <laughs> and it comes, and it comes down, you know, to your leverage, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, if you're a, you know, upcoming producer or, and you know, there's tons of producers in the game. So it's like, you know, these artists are just like on to the next, unless, unless, unless you have already a, a solid relationship with them, you know, you have to be willing to compromise here and there, you know, to, to, to get to to the to the goal, you know, and some say may, some may not. Some may say, Nah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take fifteen hundred for the beat. But you're gonna be on this major project that's gonna you know catapult your, your career all over. The, you know, like you have to think about what's what's gonna benefit your 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 career. Is it gonna be like? Okay, three grand, how long that's going to take you? How long that's going to hold you? Three to five grand, how long that's going to, you know, work for you? But getting on this project, your name is going to be there forever. Like, that's history. That's right. And not to mention, if it becomes a single, Mm -hmm. you know, singles these days can be anything. It it doesn't follow the, the, uh, doesn't follow what it used to follow. Where right. they had to have, you know, they don't have to be radio friendly. They don't have to do anything. They can just, you know, records just take off, you know. But your primary goal as a producer is to get these songs recorded and get these songs published or placed, right? Right. Like these are that's the main, main goal of production. If you can do that, then like you said, you'll be locked into an income stream. That'll go on for the duration of how many years we can, you know, keep going on and on. So, yeah, you might take a little bit of an L in the beginning, but once it comes out and if it's with a major artist and if the if the record is promoted the right way, so forth and so on, you can be cutting yourself out of a whole bunch of money in the future in perpetuity. Drug, you know, it's really sad that there are so many talented artists or there are some great records, like some great records probably life-changing records, records out there that w- would inspire, change people's lives, or influence them in a, in a, in a certain way that we will never hear. Simply because the, the business, business could not the business be business is not properly. right. Yeah. That's, it's, like, that's it's, like sad. It's the craziest thing, but no one wants to really talk about it. You know, and I think that's really what we're, this platform is to do, is to educate people and like, listen, Stop, um, you know, stop creating these these obstacles for yourself, right? And what I see happening on a lot of different platforms is that, you know, people will go on these platforms and they'll tell artists, you know, don't do this, don't do that, don't do this. No, you 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 you're sabotaging yourself. Like you're sabotaging yourself, right? The, the, like we said, the primary goal is to get that placement, right? The, and while you get that placement, you have to develop those relationships with these artists. If you think that these placements are happening simply because your music is dope, think again. You know, you have to make sure that you have a relationship with that artist and that artist has to feel that, you know, that we're able to get business done with you quickly without a whole bunch of back and forth and red tape. 
And of course, we want the artists to deal with us fairly. And I think that's what another, that's another topic that we got to talk about. Is mm-hmm. that artists got to start dealing with the producers more fairly, right? That's true. Yeah. But meaning, like, listen, if you, 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 we've been saying this a long time. You can't spend more money in a strip club than you spend on your album. Yeah, like you, you can't do that. You can't. So you that, can't. You can't be on the on in the in the on the gram flossing with the money, and then when it's time to pay for your production, you yeah. you you're tripping. Yeah, that's crazy. You can't do that. Like you know, what I'm saying like that's that's counterproductive. So you know, it's a, it's like, a smack in the face, man. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's very insulting. Yeah, it's insulting. You can't. You can't do that. Like like if it's it's like if you're producing something, if if the music is what drives your career. Why aren't you investing in your music? Like you have to invest in your music. That shouldn't be something that should be shorted, right? right? This is this is what this is what's going to ensure the longevity of your career is the production. I don't think artists are really paying attention to that. The artists that 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 kind of think that you can get production from anywhere, they don't last. Right, right. Because production production is is, is more than just making beats, man. Like Tell there's a whole say, say it again. Yeah, production is just is much more than just making beats. There's a whole backdrop of work that comes along with it. You know, it, it comes along with it. a real producer has some A and R skills. You know, they have some marketing skills. You know, they have they have a, a vision. You know, whether it, you know you can be a producer and 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 not actually make the beat. You could be a producer and walk into that studio and say, you know what. You need to move that kick. You need to take change that over. You know, let's put this artist on there. Let's resequence this and let's get it right so that the production is right. You know, like, like yeah, they, they don't they don't understand that there is there is a difference between beats and production. People don't really. It's a difference. And let me tell you, another folks, again, experience matters, man. Yeah. Like, like, like experience matters. It's like you, do you, do you think that you'll be able to, to the, the folks who have been around the, the great artists and the, the folks that have been around for a while, they don't, they, 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 there's a reason why we've been around for a while is because we understand what it takes, right? It's not just about the beats, you know, there's, there's a certain level of magic that has to happen on some of these things, man. Like, so, and, and if you don't understand what nuances is going to create that, it's like, you know, you're really kind of spinning your wheels. And I just hate to see that these a lot of the newer artists now, they start getting some bread and they don't want to reinvest in the music. Right. I, don't, I don't I don't think that that's the right approach. Um, I can't tell you how to spend your money. But if 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 this is the bedrock of your of your income, you might want to think about that. Right? You right. might want to think about that situation like, OK, if it starts with the music. And then we have to, t- you know, in order to get to the visuals, we got to build the music. That's your foundation. Shouldn't be sitting here talking about, you know, nickel and diamond that, like, again, spending more money on diff- on different things, on Balenciaga or anything else mm-hmm. versus, you know, you're spending money on how it looks versus spending the money on how your music needs to be. Your music is what perpetuates everything. It, it It's what creates what's going to be the look it creates it's the bedrock of it all it starts with that music you know i always wonder like how did it get that way it's almost like there's a lack of respect for for producers um is it because there's such a dime a dozen or like is it because um there's so much beat making software that the the entry level of being a, a beat maker or producers is so low like it just seems like you know, and we, we've said this, you know, time and time, you know, these are these producers like just putting themselves at a, at a low level, like they're shorting themselves, you know, remember like the $50 beats or the $20 beats, you know, where they're selling everything all exclusive rights for $20. Is it those things that's creating this atmosphere of a lack of produce, uh, a lack of respect for producers? Like, like, what is it, you know? It's a combination of it all. It's it's again. It's like the, you know, people are taking the position that in order for me to sell a beat over you, I have to price myself lower, hmm. right? I have to price myself lower, and 
you know, it's also that thought that, you know, all producers are doing the same thing or this beat sounds like this beat. And that's another thing is because that's what we've been doing too, is that we've now created the tight beat era where every, everybody says, okay, if it's a Drake type beat, everybody's going to make that kind of beat. Right. And then now we're creating this thing where we're basically, it all sounds the same. Right. Because if you think about it in the past, whatever you got from DJ Premier, you wasn't going to get from the Neptunes. That's true. Right. right. Whatever right. you got from, you know, whatever you got from 808 Mafia, you know, you wasn't going to get that from Pete Rock or, you know, not to right. say that those comparisons, but you're just not going to get like each producer had his own sound. Right. And, right. and, and that was part of the situation. And that's what made it, made it, made it a, a different type of marketplace. Now, because of the, the, the software, it's all the same. It all sounds the same. We're all using the same sounds. We're all using the same kits. So to the uneducated ear or the uneducated artist, they're gonna feel like, okay, this sounds like that. Right. Why should I? Why should I pay that for this if it all sounds the same? Right. So we've kind of created our own kind of cycle where everything sounds the same, and then that's the first problem. And the second problem is that you know we haven't created the floors right, and and we've been talking about this for years. The the folks who are the OGs. The folks who are who are a little bit up in the game or the ones that are creating these platforms or these marketplaces, they have to start saying, hey, listen, as a collective, here goes the here goes the here goes the bottom. It doesn't go below this number. The system simply won't allow us to go below this number. Right. Like you, you can't leave it up to the to the to the, to the um to the individuals in there because they're thinking, right. I have to sell it at this price in order to get my money out. No, you have to set a, a, a bottom for that. And you so, may have so, to set a ceiling, you know, in some cases. Well, not necessarily set a ceiling. Let me not say that. But it has to be at least be a baseline. So you're that saying like some of these um these these beat selling sites, um there 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 just needs to be a, a, a bare minimum. Like you can't we're not you're not gonna be able to come on our platform and sell beats below fifteen hundred dollars. Two grand, something like that. And if all beat making platforms, like, you know, stuck to that model, the same way, the same way, like, in regular business, like uh, the AT and T's and the the uh, T Mobiles, and you know, you, you see, you see what I'm saying? The, the, you like, know, their packages are roughly the same. Like, they don't go too far below a certain threshold. Like, is, it's because while, they get together and they regulate themselves, right? There's a reason why Pepsi and Coke cost the same. <laughs> There's a reason why, you know, what I'm saying right? They they make the decision as as businesses that we're not going to go below this threshold. We're not gonna. We're not. And and anybody that comes in to try to sell it below this threshold, we're gonna. We're gonna just immediately crush them in the business or buy them out, right. so that they so that they can they can't come in and they can't change the the structure of it. Like that's what we. That, that's us producers. I, I think is the the direction that we probably need to take. Is really it's like if we got like the B stars out there, the air bits, whatever. You know, listen. Got to set baselines. Can't just say, okay, everybody can just say, hey, $15, $20, $25. It has to be a baseline. Yeah. It's like, come and on, a, come and on. a strong and a strong one at that. Yeah. That's, and, that's and, what's gonna that's what's gonna create and maintain uh value. Yeah, it has to be a, it has to be a baseline to it. It can't just be that that situation. And I understand what also remember what that also um creates though. It creates a it's supposed to be a system where you can get, you know, people who can't afford it into mm -hmm. the game right? right like you know that's what it's supposed to be it's supposed to be like that bar you know to lower the barrier of entry my, my question to you is that when we lower the barrier the barrier of entry are we are we uh destroying the quality you know we make feel, the barrier of entry too low i feel i feel i feel kind of torn torn on on, on this one because you know, I think the low entry is destroying the the culture. Yeah. You know, um, 
but it's it, 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 but it, it's like you know there's some talented people who just are in bad situations and bad places and and these are the 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 um the creators that have that voice that have that talent you know and it's just it, it's really difficult man it's like do you put that barrier there so you know but at the same time it's like yo you you, you got you got to if you want in you got to you got to pay as you way you want this bench you got to pay for it Listen. you want to ride fly in this you got to pay for it you got to do what you got to do to get this Listen. Because we're not we, we don't, should Ben's lower their joint to two dollars to, to to make you happy to get you in. Any profession, because I call what we do a profession. Any profession has a barrier of entry, right? If you want to be a doctor, you got to go to medical school, right? Right. <laughs> There's a barrier of entry, right? If you want to be a police officer, you got to go to the police academy. You got to get accepted. It's a barrier of entry, right? So I, I don't want to create this situation in production where we've created a barrier of entry that's so low that anybody can do it. And then when anybody can do it, then we can't complain about people saying, hey, I don't want to pay that for it. And the quality, then the quality gets hit as well. There you go. You, you, we've created a barrier of entry, but let's, let's, let's go back and let's look at who really gets paid now, right? Who gets paid? Who gets paid now? The middleman, the aggregator, right? Right. So so now I can get I can make the money off of the low barrier of entry through the distro kids and you know the tune cores and so forth and so on. So what they've done mm -hmm. now is they've just you know we found a way to capitalize off the the low barrier of entry, the folks whose music will most likely never go anywhere. And you know, yeah, we'll yeah, we'll make the barrier. Yeah, anybody can do it. You come on, upload your music. Anybody could do it. Go ahead. Wow. And then all we do is we just we just tax it, right? Put a mm -hmm. little put a put a little fee on that. Hey, you want us to do content ID? Okay, we're gonna take thirty percent on that, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then they, they micro they micro dose all of the uh, income, and then that's what that's what, that's what they've done. So it's it's a it's it's kind of a a, a situation where. When we were trying to get into the situation, I was like, I, I had to take out, like, I had, I had to max out so many credit cards, right? Right. Because you couldn't get the hardware without spending two, three, four thousand dollars a time. Yep. And you couldn't get it. It, was, it wasn't. It. A, it wasn't a situation where you're going to be able to buy two hundred dollars software. Yo, and that cre and that created value because I remember, like, I remember back in the days when. You told someone you made beats, like their eyes lit up, like you 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 were sought after. People would, would chase you down, like yo, you do beats, yo yo, can I? Like it was such a hot commodity because now it, was that, do, it was too hard to get into it. Yeah, like now if you say you do beats, like oh yeah, you too, like okay, yeah, like you know. <laughs> you know, like 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 people come to me like I do beats, and I'm like, yeah, who doesn't? You know, everybody, yeah, everybody at this point, everybody, everybody does, does it at this point. Everybody, you know? and then and, that, and that's part of the problem. The part of the problem is that it's oversaturated. We know that it's oversaturated, but it's oversaturated also because, like you said, the, the point the point of entry is just it's just so low, it's too low. You know what I'm saying? Right. And listen, you have to commend the folks who saw that the barrier of entry was high and solved that problem. Right? That's, that's how you get rich. You solve a problem, right? Like you. You see what the problem is. You solve that problem. You get rich. I get it. On our end, now we have to decide now how are we going to 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 make sure that we're not undervaluing our, our art. We're in a we're in a situation now where music is the bedrock of everything, right? Every every piece of TikTok got a sound attached to it. Yeah, it's a platform that's essentially. Um, a platform that's basically putting music as the bedrock of all of its videos, right? I mean, that, I mean that, it's, it's the bedrock for everything, right? So, so for, for, mov for movies, listen. video games, like you can't even listen to the radio, like. And I said this as a joke before, of like, yo, you know, a rap song without 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 music is just just you know poetry night at the Apollo, you know. 
and and then the 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 situation now when we talk about music um is for the first time in I think our history is um music hasn't been music is finally not free like it's not free where can you get music for free now like everything has to be on a platform if if you're not paying for it, it's riddled with ads, and that's what you're, you're still paying for. It. So, the the days of you getting music for, um, you know, totally free, those days are over. Everybody yeah, has absolutely. to be subscribed to either an Apple Music or Spotify, and if you're not paying for it, quote unquote, monthly, you're paying for it through ads, right? YouTube, you name it. Like music is no longer free, so I don't understand why the value is so low in, in terms of. You know, producers in their tracks. Like people ha- are paying for music more than ever in history. Wow, I guess that's why that's why these uh, beat packs are also doing very well. You know, um, we got to touch on that. You know, these 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 beat packs, and um, you know that could be one of the. I, I don't want to say it could be one of the issues as well. You know, it's just another tool that just makes the barrier of in- of entry low. You know where. You could get, as a producer, you could just get beats sent to you that you could just, you know, copy and paste. You know, <laughs> and like, again, you know, it's, it's, it, again, it's it's up to us to differentiate. You know, yeah, you could start that way, because remember those. I think those things are supposed to educate you on how things should go, mm-hmm. right? If I get a beat pack, I'm like, I'm, I get, I gotta say, I get a trap beat pack. Like, right. you're supposed to take that and deconstruct it, right? Right, you're supposed to take the beat packs, deconstruct it. Okay, how do they get it to sound this way? Okay, look at the MIDI, look at the timing, look at you know, and then now right. you're supposed to reconstruct it based off of what you're seeing. It's for you to get. It's like us opening the hood of an engine. Right, right, right. You know, for for mm-hmm. for you know to see how it works. Opening up a computer, see how it works. You're not supposed to just take it and then just say, okay, I'm gonna just, you know replicate it and you know just take it and just, just put the parts back together again and put it back out yeah it's supposed it was the to, same part the same exact part yeah, it's, it's, suppo- it's supposed to be an educating process it's supposed to show how do i get my joints to sound like that that's why you get right. the beat pack you know what i'm saying that's why you're trying to look and see okay what did these guys do how did they get the the, the, the 808 to slide like that how did they do this how did they do that like you got to educate and yourself on the process to, and then add on to the process to take take those Mike, we just lost you. And take those sounds. You know, take those sounds and be able to manipulate them. Okay. Like that's 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 part of the situation. And I just think you gotta learn, man. And I, I you know, like it it was like me taking a track from back in the days when I started. I used to take I used to take certain certain guys' beats and I would loop them. I'd loop them. I I'd loop yeah. the premiere joint. I'd loop it. Okay, what's his tempo? What's his baseline right. tempo that he used to like? Like you know, you you have to know because if you're if you're trying to, you know, you you have to know what he did in order to improve on what they did. You know? I used to take I used to take I used to take uh, Mob Deep's Godfather Part Three acapella and create a beat behind it to see how would how would like I would you know. The, the speed, how how the vocal would sit in the track, you know, all these little tricks, just to to study, you know, like how how to have getting this vibe to do this or how you know like that's the study, and I don't think um, producers are studying. No, they're just thinking you that know? okay, let me just put it into the system. It's easy, you know. Let me just click the few white boxes, you know. FL or whatever. <laughs> let me click the little tabs and let me mm-hmm. let it to go, which is fine. But at the same time, I don't think a lot of folks are really listening and making sure that hey, we're we're trying to really get better and perfect the craft and push the culture forward. You got some guys like that's that's what we used to love the Timberlands or we used to love like the Just Blaze or whatever. Like like, did you hear what they did? Did you hear that new record? <laughs> Q tip. Did you hear that new record? Like no, I, no ID. No ID. P Rock. Did you hear it? Did you hear what he did next? Like oh my god. Like you know, large professor. Like you know, and I and, and I know we're kind of 
rehashing some of the old cats, but even if I go even some of the new cats, the Mike Will made it. The um, you know, and he's not even new anymore, but you know what I mean. Like in the, in Mike, the, Will, the diff- um, Mike Will, um, Southside, um, Metro, you know, mm-hmm. even even these guys again, you know, they're they're pushing their sound forward. Lex Luger, right? They pushed their sound forward. They did something different. They pushed their situation forward. And what what we what we keep seeing is we just keep seeing like a rehash of okay, this type beat, that type beat. Okay, I mean we you could do it. Sometimes I put those joints on the YouTube channel just to see, you like, you know, like this is really what people are into. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just to yeah. just to see it's, what it's, it is. And I think all of this, um this is why the, the artists don't you know don't wanna don't wanna pay. They don't wanna pay. And we we've we've literally devalued our own music. Hey, we've we've done it, you know what I'm saying? And and the platforms are not helping, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, to, to these other platforms out here like that are that you know, I well, I'm suggesting that you know you, you have a a meeting of the minds and start setting baselines. Like yeah. there should be there should be no reason why uh an established artist should be complaining about the prices of, of music. Right. Like I just don't I like I don't I don't understand it because even when we were first getting into the game and we were working with the greatest of the greats, Nas, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Pun, mm-hmm. Wu Tang, Raekwon. Mm-hmm. These guys never beat us in the head about the price. Yeah. They could have paid us anything they wanted to. Yep. They could have paid us anything they wanted to. And mind you, if you if you didn't pay it out in that budget, you got to keep that money. Right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> so yep. so it was coming directly out of their pocket. These folks never once said that they wasn't going to pay for their production. Nas could have said, I'm not paying you anything. I'm Nas. <laughs> could have said True. that. And we would have said, take it, bro. <laughs> At that time? Oh, yeah. yeah. Bro, take it. You could have said, we could have said that. Punk could have said, hey, we're not paying you nothing. You know, on, on you know, what I'm saying after on the second album and all that, we're not giving you anything. No, he didn't. None of them took those up. Those those. See, that's how you know it's it's some it's some real bullshit. It's because you guys are now taking the taking the, the music from the artists and don't want to pay them. Like, come on, man, that's crazy. Like now, now these artists don't now these artists don't want to pay. Now you don't want to pay. Like I, I can't believe it. Like sometimes I can't believe it. Like you guys are literally. If I go through your timeline, your whole timeline is you flexing and you don't want to pay for your music. That's crazy. It's crazy. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. And it's like, so, you know, big shout out to all of those, to, to the OGs, the ones that early in the game in their primes. We're not talking about, you know, we're talking about in their primes. We're talking about, you know, in the, in those, in the time frames, like, you know, like late, late nineties, these guys were still, they, they didn't have any problem paying for production period. Yeah. And they could have told they could have told you to kick rocks. They could have said, listen, I'm gonna make you I'm gonna blow you up once I put you on my project. I really don't need to pay you. What's disappointing though is 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 you know major artists with disappointing production. Like at this point, like with the resources a lot of these these art major artists have, man, they, and, and there's so many there's so many producers out there, man. It's just it's disappointing when when a major artist just has some production that's just ain't up to par, and you were like, like how how is this possible? I think that falls on A and R though. I think the A and Rs are not doing their job. I don't think the A and Rs, you know, I think the A and Rs are too busy trying to self interest themselves, you know. But here, like, but but here's the thing also. A lot of these A and Rs are not really real A and Rs. They're not involved in the actual process like they used to be. That's what like I'm saying. That, like, 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 you know, back back when a lot of albums were great, like the the A and Rs would be part of it. They'll be in the trenches, rocking out with them. Right. You know, day gathering, and night with them, gathering in the, the mu- gathering the music in the hood, in the basement, wherever it is. Now these A and Rs are not trying to be over there. These A and Rs do not have relationships with the artists. Or the artists, right, right, it's, and the artists don't even they, the artists don't even trust them, right. So, in them in those situations, even if the A and R was to get beats, the, the the artists are like, I ain't taking no beats from you. I'm good over here, right.
You know, I got the situation with the beast that I had. So, but let's but let's talk about the other part of that. The other part mm-hmm. of that is that the ANOS, you know, the ANOS um, nowadays, and I'm not talking for everybody, but most of them, they mm-hmm. have their own agendas, right? right? Meaning they're only trying to put, they're only trying to push the music that's signed to them, right? Right. right? So they mm-hmm. sign. So now that's the new hustle where the ANOS go. They sign these guys. They set up their publishing company. They set up their little situation. They set up mm-hmm. their songwriter. So they got their circle or they go to circle, right? I, I get it. If your go-to circle is making hits, you go. You're gonna go to that circle first, right? right. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that 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 should be. They should monopolize it all, right? You should still be looking for new talent. You should still be looking for new music. It shouldn't just be, I got this circle of you know five or ten writers and producers, and they're gonna do every single project that comes through the label for the entire ten year span. Like, come on, like you That's know, what I'm saying that, like that burns out, man. Come on. Yeah, like this. This is not a like. I get it, but I get it. But at the same time, your job is to look for new, new, fresh talent. You're supposed to be open to submissions. Yes, it's time consuming, but at the same time, it's like you know what we're asking for is a certain level of uh, it to be equitable on some terms. But we know that's not really the case. We know that it's severe nepotism. We know that's a severe favoritism, and. Again, if you don't have relationships, uh, and I'll say it, and I'll keep saying it, and I'll say it till I'm blue in the face, you need relationships in this business, or you need somebody who has relationships in this business. A a lot of our placements wasn't because you know the music was better than this next guy's music. A lot of our placements are because we were in the room and we had a relationship with that artist. Absolutely. And we and he heard our joints first, and that was that. (laughs) <laughs> like yep. like that's just it, let's let's it's can't, funny, you can't yo, make it, it you can't make it up it's so funny like the way it goes sometimes like you can make the hottest record and that's only you know part of the part of, part of it, it. yeah like there's so many scenarios there's so many things that go into effect way after it leaves your your, your production setup you know, it could be anything from the way the artist feels, who's in the room, you know, who walks in, who walks out, you know, which engineer hits the button, if the music is played at the right time. Like, <laughs> they, 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 you know, there's just so many things that go into, because you're, it's based on creativity, like emotions, feelings, you know. The same record, can, you know how many times, you, play, you know, we, we played a record one day, and then play those play those same records, you know, a couple of days later, and all this like, oh yeah, you didn't play me these joints. Yeah, they wasn't listening. It, it was like they wasn't in the zone. Like, and that's that's so important. Like they wasn't yeah, in the zone. Yeah, these records for you. You you know, but yeah. you wasn't in the headspace, obviously. Yeah. Your yeah. air was the different place. You were listening for something specific or something different at the time. Yeah. You know, so that's 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 just the whole like another um part of it, but you know. You know, I've been just very disappointed in, you know, like the quality um, from major artists, you know, and um, like, like, like you were saying, I, I think a part of it is just, you know, all of these things that we, we you know, we're talking about as far as, you know, uh, some, some of these producers are not, are not being fully creative. They're just swiping a beat pack, you know, and just whatever, you know, making type this beats, trying to run with that, you know, and you know, we we gotta be more and more creative, man. And and at the same time, artists, you gotta be willing to, to pay for your production. That's your backbone of your career. If you don't have good production, man, your, your career is not gonna last, man. Like you're gonna get called out on it eventually, you know, and you know, it's it's it's, it's not gonna be a beneficial thing for you. So, you know, as far as for artists you know, I would always um, tell them, like, listen, make sure your, your production is, is, is up to speed. You know, make sure that you have good production that, that matches what you're trying to do. You know, worse than, uh, than, uh, than, uh, than uh, you know, he's nice, but his beast is whack. I, I, I digress sometimes. <laughs> it's, like, it's like to see some of the lack of investment in their own situation is kind of scary. It's like, you know, there's a lack of investment. Um. The other part of the situation too is that listen, you you know the the producers 
Like let's 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 take a situation like say a Nas, right? Mm-hmm. Nas Hit Boy collaboration. Best thing that's ever happened to his career. Yeah. Right. But when was the last time it was like that? When he was with Trackmasters. Trackmasters. See what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So sometimes the switching out and the moving and the moving parts, you know what I'm saying? Like, like there there were times when the music gets really good when he was when he's rocking with you know when he first had the first music on um, the first Illmatic we talk about that but that's all superstar producers all of, the, superstar of, of the era right, right. we can't of that, right. of that era we can't take we can't take away from that then we go to another set of superstar producers right which would have been the track masters right they they do the next few joints as they start to move as we start to now move away from that then you see mm-hmm. the decline right right, right. Right. Then he then he gets a little bit more success when he starts to really hit with Salah and Remy, right? Right. And then we see it now starts to get a little bit more consistent. Right. And then as we leave that again, then we see the decline again. Right. right. So the situation is this is that you can almost look at it in terms of the production, right? If if we say what's well, Jay Z's best albums, the ones with Kanye and Just Drip, Just Blaze predominantly, right? And Bink and right. those guys. Yeah. <laughs> those yeah. make the best albums, right? Yeah. You know, if you want to take, you know, Biggie, same thing. It's like it's all rooted in the productions. Um, and and it's hard for you to get away from that. If if you know, if we're even talking about the futures of the world and you know, the other ones are like they stick to their core guys, and that's what it is, you know, and 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 they're not afraid to pay for it and make it sound the way it needs to sound. Drake, you know, with 40, you know. Same thing, you know. He may switch producers every now and again, but that core is not going to be removed. Yeah. And if it do, and if it does get removed, <laughs> you, you know what it sounds like. Hear, you're going to hear the complaints. Yeah, you're going to hear the complaints. So, it's pardon, but like you know, again, you see it. You see it going on. It's just doing what it needs to do. You know, it, it's 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 one of those things. I want to I want to jump into. Uh, you know, one of the last parts of it, and I think you and I talked about it. We talked about the using of the packs and the royalty free oh. loops. And we want to tell producers that if you're going to use loops, beat packs, sample packs, royalty free loops, whatever, make sure that you're using the ones that don't require additional clearances once it's time for you to get your music placed. Yeah. And and the reason why we're telling you not to do that, not to use royalty loops, loops that have to be cleared for usage, it creates a situation where you're no longer in control of your production. So I take a loop from somebody, I take this, I put, I put them into my my into my record, I get the record placed, so I've done all of the legwork. Now it's time for me to get the record to be released. And now I have to go to a third party who may not agree with the terms of the agreement that I made with the artist. Wow. So so you're saying that you got to go back to the actual loop creator. Right. To get permission to now um, for them to get permission to use it for the new recording. And we're just trying to advise the producers. Make sure that that doesn't happen. Make sure that you're looking through the fine print and the terms of service when using the royalty free loops. And making sure that they don't have to be quote unquote credited or cleared. Right. Because that can demand it. You're basically shopping their beats. Listen, it's genius. <laughs> it is. Like, you know what I'm saying? It, it's on certain on, on certain levels, it's genius, right? And on on listen, and if it's not a problem to clear it, if everything gets cleared, regardless of what you call it, regardless of terms, then I guess it's no problem. But that's not what's happening. What's happening is that now they're creating an extra layer of a situation where now they can insert themselves in the negotiation. And that's part of the problem. It's like no one wants to deal with that in this day and age. Right? You see the, the, these beat packs, man, and you're supposed to be able to create what you're going to create from them and move on. Like I purchased the beat pack. Right. You know, And that's part of the reason why you guys have it that way so that you can sell it in perpetuity. You guys are selling it hundreds thousands of times right so you're supposed to be making your bread based off of that now right. if you're trying to now get into if you want to get into the publishing side of it then you're going to have to basically shop your own music <laughs> right like like you're going to have to shop man, your own music man, cheating. <laughs> it's a cheat code 
And it's cheating on both sides. It, let's yeah. let's let's be honest. Yeah, that's true. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's cheating on both sides. I'm cheating because I don't want to do the melodies. I don't want to be on the keyboard. And they're cheating because they don't want to deal with having to run around chasing these artists replacements. Nobody but, wants but, nobody wants to do that anymore. But it has to be known up front. You know, it has to be known up front. You gotta know what you're dealing with. You know, you gotta know. You gotta know um when you get these uh producer loops, you gotta know, you know, what you got yourself into. Because yeah. man, that, that really sucks. Man, it's horrible, man, for you to create a beat from a from a loop pack and you got a dope placement that could change your career. You agree to all of the terms and everything, you're ready to rock out. It's gonna be a single, it's gonna be this major artist, man, and then here comes the, the loop maker like, nah. I want more. <laughs> I want this. I want everything. I want that. Oh, I don't like yeah. the record. I'm not clearing it. I'm this. Yeah. I'm that. I need this. Or I need this. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I see it. We've seen it. Like we said, we said you said at the beginning. He said you see all these records that don't see the light of day because of the poor business in the background. Because someone that's either has an inflated sense of the ego, somebody's in the background saying, "Oh, it shouldn't be this. It should be that." Whereas you did all the heavy lifting. The heavy lifting is getting the damn placement. The heavy lifting is getting the song, you know, mixed and mastered. Do you like you yeah. remember how we used to when we when we used to have these things happening, like it's okay, oh they, they're calling us to mix the record. That means you're getting ready to make it, right? <laughs> so now <laughs> if 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 you made it to mixing, you made it to mix. You you're you're part of the, the conversation, right. right? And now if you make it to mastering. Yeah, that's nine that's times good. out of ten, you're gonna be on the album, right? Yeah, you're making a master, and you're pretty much a stone. You're pretty much a stone, right? But then again, anything can still happen, right. right? So, so, so everybody knows that there's a process to getting these records published. Like this is not a, a a thing where people just record it and it just comes out. There's a process to this thing, and it's like once you become the one of the hundred tracks that may have gotten recorded. Yeah. Right. Because this is, you know, what I'm saying this. This is a situation. Like now, artists can record a hundred songs before they decided to, you know, to to put out ten or twelve. Before it wasn't like that. They maybe they they may have recorded twenty. Right. Right. You might get twenty recorded if if you're lucky back in the days. Now they'll record a little bit more. It's done faster. It's more leisurely. They can do it a little bit quicker. So your chances are increased. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to cannibalize our own chances of getting on. Like, this is what I'm seeing happening. Like, you're preventing yourselves from getting placements? And you don't have any? <laughs> it's, 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 it's that inflated... You know how hard it is to get the hardware on the wall? I don't think people really realize how hard it is to get that hardware on the wall. You know how hard it is to get these plaques? You know how hard it is? And you guys got it in, a, in an era where it can happen a lot easier. Yeah, but right. back then... But back then, once they took you out of stores, that was it. Your sales stopped. <laughs> <laughs> right or wrong? Like, it, once you once you were in the stores and you popping, and then once they decided, hey, you ain't got no more room on the shelf for you, you're pulled out the stores. This is not like how I can just keep going back to old music and Spotify days and I can keep racking up streams, you know, because people can keep going back to it. They can discover it five years later and all of us oh, can make a TikTok and it can go you know like a triple platinum yeah like you know this, this is not this is not the same as when it was you know so like you know like like don't cannibalize yourselves don't put yourselves in a situation where you're making it harder for yourself to get your songs placed like i i i don't want to see that like that's not for us it's, we already have enough obstacles like right. don't 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 create more obstacles in these type of situations and i want to go back again to the artists listen the artists if you're out here and you're making money pay for your tracks bottom line Pay for your tracks. Pay for your tracks. You pay for everything else. You pay for everything else. You're paying for the cars. You're paying for the clothes. You're paying for the jewelry. Pay for your tracks. That's it. That's it. If you if you if you if you if you're if you're, a, if you're an artist and you're not a struggling artist, if you, look. If you're an independent artist and you ain't got a budget, I understand that. If you're an independent artist and you ain't making any money, I understand that. That's different. That's a different situation, right? That's that requires a different talk conversation. And if we believe in your talent. We'll, we'll 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 shoot you that, that those that music if we believe that in what you're doing and we believe in your hustle and your grind we'll shoot you that music right Absolutely. but once you start earning some bread you got to double back you got to double back and I and that's what I see that I don't see that happening enough 
Like, I don't see it happening enough. Like, listen, when you're not getting it and somebody t- takes a chance and says, hey, I'm such and such, I'm going to give you this production. I'm going to give you this, these these tracks, you know, and then I'm going to validate you because I'm validating you. Once we say, okay, we rocking with this, we rock with Nas Pun and, and, and Raekwon and all Killer that. Mike, walk all of that, right? Mm-hmm. So we're validating you. If you're an unknown, then we're validating you. So if you, by the time we validate your situation and you start to get some traction and you start getting some bread, kick it back. Yeah, you're supposed to come back and say, hey. Hey, hold something. It's not a lot, but hold something. Word. Right? This is how you good, develop a relationship. Good business. Good business. Reciprocity. See, see, good business, that, was, that, that, that allows us to continue doing business. Right. But, but when you get on that other nonsense... And you doing stuff and not paying your producers and and you you in the clubs and you throwing this around. Okay. Not only not only your producers. Hold on. Let's 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 go a little further, man. It's not just your producers, man. What about what about all all, all the people that work with you? How do you, how do you think they feel? They don't understand that. They don't understand that when you become an artist, you become you become an ecosystem, right? You become like almost a small economy. Right. Right. If you take LeBron James out of Cleveland, what happens to Cleveland's economy? Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. That's how this is how it works. When you become an artist, you become a small economy, right? Where now the income that you earn has to feed the machine around you to keep you relevant as the artist. Absolutely. Yep. Period. So, so you can't think that all of a sudden now that you're popping that okay, I, I'm just going to take care of me. Yeah. Because you, you didn't get the you, you, you got to maintain the machine. All you have to invest and improve upon the machine so that you can keep eating. Like, like that's that's the that's where folks are losing it. They're not understanding. Like, you have to basically reinvest back into your own machine so that you can continue to eat and grow, right? Too often that you see them. Okay, I got the bread now. I'm not going to reinvest into my machine. Into the machine. They start taking the approach that I'm such and such. You should work for me for free. Come on, like, come on, like, come on, like. Are you going to get the best talent when you work for free, bro? Right. Can you can can, can you run a can can you run a can you run a corporation and recruit the best CEOs and talent for free? How? It doesn't work that way. So, like, we get we got it. We got to get out of the mind frame that you know these people should be working for free and these people should be you know giving you their information for free, giving you the experience for free. Like, come on now. Yo, know, and, and then and then you know, like these these producers, man, they got they got they got families, you know, and it's real. They 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 have a life. They got they got things they need to handle too. It's real. How Everything's... how you know that's important. It's real. You, you want know. this out. You want this out of them, but you gotta you gotta come on. You gotta now you, you gotta you gotta and and the thing about it is that listen, this if. If you really don't got it like that, don't flex it. Man, Joe, they ain't gonna hear you on that. If you, you really don't, if, if they you really, love the gram. <laughs> listen, if you don't got it like that, you shouldn't be flexing it like that, right? Because now the expectation is like we're watching that, right? We're looking at it like, okay, how are you gonna say you A B C D E F G, and then when it's time for you to pay this invoice, you balking like I ain't got that. <laughs> What happened? What happened? I thought you was good. <laughs> it's all cap. Like, you know, like, come on, like, stop. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, like it's, and it, listen, again, like I said, if we believe in your talent, we're going to put in. We're going to take some risks, right? Me giving you, like, I don't think artists really understand. It's like, listen, if I give you this track, right? And this track is popping, I give you this track, you do whatever. That's one less track I can give to Freddie Gibbs. That's one less track I can give to Killer Mike. <laughs> right? That's one less track I can give to Jada Kiss. I'm right? literally, I'm literally taking food out of my mouth. I'm taking other opportunities away from ourselves. Tell them. Like, tell them. Like, I, think, I don't think people really understand that. Yeah. Like, I, I think all, I think all artists need to have that appreciation. One thing that I really appreciated about Nas is is he 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 always said thank you like Word. like like Word. 
Like you gave yo, thank you, man. Word. And it was sort of like we supposed to be thanking you. <laughs> you not. You not. So you supposed you know, to be thanking you. Thank you. Or value value your opinion. Like, what do you think about this? Should I should I do it like this? Should I say it like this? You know, like yo, know, those things go a long way. And look how long ago that was, and we can you still remember that? Like it goes a long way. Like people, like like that's to the artist. Like like when the last time we heard thank you. Damn. And there's a lot of artists we we worked with. When last time you heard thank you? From when last time you heard thank you from an artist that you helped? Uh, the year of. <laughs> See if you gotta see if see if we gotta do, if we gotta do that. I know the artist. I, it's, it's, it was years ago when, um, yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah, like it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be like that because again, it's like you know we're, you know we're 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 creating we're helping your situation and there's a lot of folks that call us, a lot of folks that ask for game. A lot of folks that we give a lot of free information out. You free need information. Free information. You need something? Yo, here, hold that. No problem. You know what I'm saying? And and we just and a lot of times it's just because you know some folks couldn't wrap their mind around the fact that hey, we just wanted you to succeed. Yeah. Right. You gotta, like because we come from a we come from a strong A and R background. And and that's the that's and that's another part of it too is because we want to see the music, like we want to see the music that we co-sign and support succeed because what that does is that changes the trajectory of the culture, right? And I think more of us and more A and R's like you know more people that's that's come from our era, we, we're too hands off of the situation. So now we can we can't complain about the trajectory of the of the of the culture. We're not involved enough. Like if we're not involved enough, how are we going to change the trajectory? If if it's all negative, we let that happen. Yeah. It should be more than just being gatekeepers and just saying, you know, this one gets on and that one doesn't get on. It should be should be more about listen, try it like this, give you some more game and like, okay, let's do it this way, let's do it that way. It shouldn't always just be about I'm the gatekeeper, pay me to get on. Like, come on, like it can't just be about like that. Yeah. Yeah. Too much of that going on. It was way too much. It was way too much before, and now that they've lost control of it, it's like now you see the disrespect for a lot of the OGs because they were playing like gatekeepers. So now the young, now the young cats are saying "fuck you," (laughs) right? (laughs) And, And it's like, can you blame them? It's like I can't blame them. Like you was playing gatekeeper. You wasn't. You wasn't really even giving me a chance. Right. Like, come on, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, give me a chance. Like, let me, let me, you know, sometimes if you send the music to me the right way, I'll I'll take a listen to it. If you send it to me the right way. If right. you're gonna if if you don't send it to me the right way, then you know, if you don't make it convenient for me to listen to, then that's different. Right. You know, but if if you send it the right way, then you know, and if there if, if there's a sort of a, a a sort of a relationship here, if you follow, if you this, if you come, you know what I mean? Yeah. Then yeah. then then but, but you know it comes it comes down to you know, like you know like you said you know it, it's it's the way it, it's it's being done it's the presentation it's you know the way you you know you gotta, you gotta invest in yourself period you know if you have a service for that yeah then, then invest in yourself and you'll get it you'll get you know the information you need All right so let's recap <laughs> we we talked about a lot right so we talked about you know, artists with budgets, you know, not wanting to pay their producers. Pay your producers. Pay your producers. Get off that bullshit. Pay your producers, yeah. man. You can't stop staying on the gram, flexing all your paper, and then when it's time to pay the producers, you're screaming and you're hollering. Come on. Yeah. Stop stop that. So, basically, artists, you know, especially a new upcoming artist, you know, spend, spend some time digging and looking for the right producers that's going to um, create a sound for you that's going to push this thing forward for you. You know, too many times you're just trying to find a, a beat that sounds like this or sounds like that. You know, you really need to be concerned about 
how is the sounds going to be in another five to ten years? Not exactly what sounds now. Yo, so I'll, spend I'll, the time. Yeah, say that again, man. Spend the time looking for the producer that's going to propel your 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 career to the sound that's going to be for the future, not right now. Okay, and then when you find that producer or those producers, you know, take care of them. You know, they have families. They they need to upgrade their equipment or whatever. They got things they need to. You know, take care of them. If you're out there flashing money. And, and, and at strip clubs and buying the new so-and-so every every month, make sure your producers are paid. Make sure they're a, a little something. It don't got to be the full thing if you can't afford it, but show them some appreciation because these are the guys that's going to stand behind you and create that backdrop to help your career. And if they're really good producers, they're not just going to, to provide you beats they're going to do some marketing. They're going to help reach out to other artists. To, to They're going to help promote your project as well. Because so your, you wanna, cause, cause your success is tied to their success. Exactly. So you want to make sure that you, 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 you take care of the producers and the people around you that's supporting you. That's, 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 I think that's key. I couldn't say it better than, I couldn't say it better than that boy. And then, um, the next thing that we said again with the producers and the collaborations, mm -hmm. Producer make sure that make sure that you guys are on the same page, and make sure that some of the things are going to be established about what needs to happen and in, in terms of what you're going, what you may be charging, and then who's going to take the lead on any placement negotiations because it can't be split amongst too many people. Right. You know, somebody if, has to some if 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 somebody places the record, you know, if somebody gets a placement, it has to tie back to a lead person who's going to lead the negotiations, and you have to be okay with that. Right. And you guys need to be fully aware of what the fee is going to be. If if producer A charges ten grand and producer B charges ten grand and producer C charges ten grand, don't go to that artist after for thirty grand. So an yeah. average it's an average of ten that you're gonna have to divide. You gotta take the ten, maybe even the five, and split it. And I know some folks will look at that and say, What are you talking about? It's like the goal is to get placed. The goal is for your music to get placed, released, published. Once it's published, it'll earn in perpetuity. It'll it'll garner new um opportunities based on your resume. That's the goal. The goal is to get placed, to grow your resume, to grow your experience, and then to earn in perpetuity. Your music cannot earn any money if it's sitting on somebody's hard drive. Fill that resume up. Fill that resume. Get that experience. It's going to open more doors than you can imagine. More opportunities. There will be a lot more opportunities based on your resume than you think you, you know, outside of music. Outside of just production, right? We're talking about ambassador situations, influence situations, software uh, uh, partnerships, all types of different things that you can do once your resume is big enough. Yeah, because at the end of the day, okay, you, you may you probably did not get that bag from that record up front, but because you're on this record now, you can get a bag from a sponsorship because they heard that record. Now you can get a bag for these endorsements and all these other things right. because of that record. So because then, of yeah, that record. you got you just got your bag. It's just the gift that keeps on giving, but you have to be on the record in order for that to happen. Don't don't cannibalize yourself too early on trying to be hard nosed in negotiation because this, you know, this podcast, not this podcast, but some other guys' podcast, say, hey, you you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to do that. Be flexible. Understand what the situation is and always think long term. Like always think long term. Always think about the benefits of it long term. It may be a short term con, but there should be a whole bunch more benefits and pros in the future. We're not saying work for free. Yeah, we're not saying work for we're not, free. Let's say, <laughs> we're, we're not, not saying, saying that. For free, but some of your expectations need to be, you know, you got to consider certain things, especially if you're new and you're just getting in. If your resume doesn't support it, if your resume doesn't support it, if there's not a bunch of platinum records under your under your joint, a bunch of gold records, or not a lot of prominent artists, or if you're a regional, then you got to really 
start to think, okay, how do I expand that reach and how do I, you know, make negotiations that are going to be in line with what I've already done. Right. Right. Um, The other thing that we talked about, I think was the last thing was the clearances Mm -hmm. of using sample packs and loops and things like that. There are different places that you can use to get samples and loops. And, you know, I I won't um, go into any names in particular, but you want to make sure that they're clearance free, meaning that you don't have to go back and um, get clearance from the original loop makers and that you don't have to credit these folks and so forth and so on. Um, if you're doing that, you're creating a situation for yourself that can, you know, stop your stop your music from coming out. And you, and you want to make sure that you don't you're not putting someone else in the driver's seat um, for the things that you may have negotiated or, you know, the resources that you may have used in using your network. Yeah, there's so many uh, obstacles in just getting a beat placed out the gate. So to put another step in front of you is just. It's ridiculous at this moment, you know. You don't want anybody, you know, you don't want to make a great deal and a great situation for yourself and then someone comes out of left field and says, no, you know, that's, 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 you know, the worst. And, you know, the record could be great. The record could be something that's going to change your life, change your family's life, you know, you know, begin your legacy, your journey into this career, into this game. And for someone to come in and, and just say no, you know, because you didn't, you know, look at the fine print, you didn't do your due diligence, we didn't, you know, take these loop packs and ask the right questions, you know, ask the questions, you know, because some of these loop packs, some of them are just sending them via emails. Hit the hit the hit the hit the producer and ask them, hey, you know, what what when it comes to this. Do I got to pay you? What's the rules? Yeah. Like, What's the terms? Yeah. What's the terms, man? You got to ask these questions. And, and you know, if you're, if you're good with it, then fine. But just be very clear so that later on down the line, if something jumps out, you know, you're not, you're not like, oh, no, oh, my God. You know, be very clear on what you're getting yourself into. And I would advise that you use loop packs that you have full range. You don't have to go back and not get clearances. If you're going to loop, use loop packs, I would suggest you use one with no strings. That's key. Like, no, you got to, if it's royalty free and royalty free, doesn't need credit. It doesn't need this. It doesn't need that. Like, I'm just taking it and I'm able to run. You got paid for it and that's it. All right. One one thing else that um we, we wanted to touch on real quick is content ID. There's, oh, an yeah. issue, there's an issue going on with Content ID, um, which is pretty scary. <laughs> um, Joe, you want to touch on that a little bit? It was bound to happen because for those who don't know what Content ID is, Content ID is a system that YouTube uses. It may be, I should say, most social media platforms use to identify copyright ownership of music, right? Fingerprint. Of, so it's like it's basically a digital fingerprint for your music. So if you take a a, uh, a song from say um, whoever, right, Diana Ross, let's just put that out there, and you put it in your video, the mm-hmm. the the content ID will fingerprint that music or basically scan it and says, hey, your your video has Diana Ross in it. We can either take it down, or you know, in YouTube's case, YouTube just pays the original person so that you can't monetize it. The social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram, et cetera, they're not on that yet. Even um, TikTok, they're not, they're, they're just going to remove your sound or they're going to remove your video, right? So what's been happening with producers lately is say, for example, you go to a platform like a, you know, again, like a BeatStar, so forth and so on. They're supposed to content ID your track, right? That's supposed to happen through BeatStars. Mm-hmm. But, w- w- but what has been happening is that you may have the initial content ID. A person takes your song, takes your track, records their song, puts it out again through maybe say a TuneCore or DistroKid, and then they add an additional layer of content ID, right? Mm. So then that's what's happening with that now is just creating, they're, they're giving the um, the ownership to the later content ID versus the previous one. Mm. And then that's creating the issue where um, producers music may be getting removed from their own um, from their platforms like so you wow. can have you can have music on Instagram that's going to remove 
because somebody else just re- recorded the song and decided that they want to put content ID on and, 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 and it'd be rightfully yours. And it's rightfully yours. <laughs> right? Wow. So, so this is part of the... This is something that we weren't... People weren't ready for it, right? Because... What, you, what folks were trying to combat, they were trying to combat the illegal use, meaning you took my song or you ripped it off my website and then you you know did a video to and put it on YouTube. But I don't think that they were able to, to, that they were ready for the fact that people may be literally paying to lease the tracks and then now re-releasing them because that's what's happening. You're really re-releasing it, mm-hmm. right? So um, I'm, I'm hoping that the technology will hope to evolve to kind of combat that. Um, for the producers themselves, we've always been proponents of releasing the music so that you can get content ID. Or if you don't do that, uh, you'll have to get it to a get your music to a content ID um, aggregator to help to protect you. But a lot of it is to protect from unauthorized use. Right. And in most cases, if they do flag you for content ID, um, if you were the one who had it first, mm-hmm. then you can most likely appeal it. The other part of it too, copyright, 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 copyright. You got to copyright this music. Yeah. Like, you got to copyright this music. Something, uh, something that I wanted to touch on is that, you know, TikTok has its own platform called sound on. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's basically, you can upload your music to TikTok and it'll distribute it like, you know, a distro kid and so forth and so on. But if you have music that's already out and you want to claim that platform, you have to prove that you're the copyright owner. Oh, wow. Okay. Now wow. they want you, they want you to basically upload a copy of the actual copyright in order to claim the profile. Yeah. You see, you see where it's going? So you and I have been talking about copyright now for the last year, right? <laughs> on, on this platform, talking about the importance of copyright, and that now that we get into this wild, wild west of content ID. Your copyright is going to be everything. So for artists out here that aren't copywriting their music, going through a copyright.gov, you got to watch your back because folks are going to start taking your, they're going to start claiming your content mm-hmm. and it all goes to, it's good. It all goes to who copyrights it first. Ouch. So, wow. The, and the so, person who copyrights it first may not even be, really be the legitimate owner. It might not be the legitimate owner. OK, so so you can you, you can be putting yourself in a lot of harm's way. So producers, I, I can't encourage you more than you, you have to make sure that the music is being copywritten. You have to make sure that if you haven't gotten with a um, performing rights organization, you need to get with one. ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, whatever. You got to get with one of them and you got to get with an administrator. Those days are you trying to you know collect your money yourself. Those days is over. You, you got to get with one of these. um these folks that can help collect your money, the the song trust of the world, mm-hmm. and there's some others, you know. But you got to get with them so that you can make sure that you're you're being represented and that you're not losing out on your money globally because you can lose out. And because if you if you don't, they can put there if they claim your music as a content ID, it's gonna it's gonna you know supersede everyone else's because of the large the large organization that it is. Mm-hmm. Wow! Right. So they, those folks can fight for you in the background, make sure that your, your channels are whitelisted and so forth and so on. You, you have to make sure those things get taken care of. So if you haven't already done it, copyright your music. If you haven't already gotten with a PRO, a performer rights organization, you got to get with one. And if you haven't gotten with a, um, a publishing administrator, you got to get with one to make sure that you can put yourself in the best position to collect your money. Yeah, especially when you start making that catalog and you start making pushing out music, dropping these projects here and there, independent, whatever. You definitely have to have those things going for you or else you're going to be lost in the sauce, man. <laughs> sorry, it's sorry. It's wild, wild, wild West out here, folks. It, ain't nothing worse. And ain't nothing worse than you, you making bangers and somebody else is claiming it as theirs. Like, you see somebody else's credit underneath it. Like, whew, that that ain't that ain't it, man. So and, please and protect my, yourself. And, and Mike, we, we're, not even, we're not even fully... In with the music in the blockchain yet? Wow! So so once we get to once we start getting music really integrated in the blockchain, it's going to be a whole new set of rules. The rules that applied won't apply again because <laughs> the blockchain is going to be different, right? So when we start going in that direction, 
you know, as far as NFTs and so forth and so on with music, you know, will the copyrights even apply? It's gonna be whole. It's gonna be a whole different ball game again. So again, like you know, educate yourself so that you know so that you can be ready for the emerging technology that's coming. Yeah, that's. I think that's that's key right there to make sure that you're aware of technology and how it's gonna affect you know what you're doing because you could be building on an old uh, dying platform, you know, some old technology, and yeah, if you're not will, if you're not willing to 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 learn. And to, to, to integrate into what's new, you, you're gonna you're gonna feel cheated. You're gonna <laughs> you're gonna be, you know, dead in the water, as as, as they say. So, yeah, folks, that's the Architect Beats Music Business Podcast today, man. It be, we man, we talked on about a whole bunch of things today. So y'all got a <laughs> whole lot of jewels on this one. You're gonna have to be rewinding, rehashing, making sure that you understand what's going on because, you know. It's going to be what it's going to be if you're not, if, if you're going to get taken advantage of, if you're not, you know, making sure that you're, you're in tune with what's going on. But if you want more additional information, you know, www.architectbeats.com, mm-hmm. reach out to us at social media, Twitter, etc. on Architect Beats is all the same. Um, YouTube at Architect Beats. And if you have questions, you know, I'll be have the group. That's our Facebook group. You can always jump into that. And, you know, we like to, you know, uh, drop the jewels on folks in there. And we will be doing a Patreon soon. So in the Patreon, that's going to be a little bit different where folks will get some advanced, advanced tips. And then, you know, we'll also be, you know, helping, you know, a select few people kind of move their situations forward. So look out for that. That'll be coming soon. And if you're in the NFT world, NFT coming soon. Hip hop kids, NFTs coming soon. So that'll be really Hip-hop cool. Kids. Listen, that's that's gonna be special. Very. You know what I mean? Hip hop kids, NFT. Go check that out on Twitter. But until next time, y'all. Peace. Peace. Take beats.